Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be on a similar subject. And yes, this is a koi fish. And I think they're in the carp family. I used to uh, <clears throat> shoot them when I was a kid in the river that I lived next to. But you're wondering why is this koi fish there? Because I'm now the proud owner of a model Moonman S100 in the Koi finish. I hope that pronunciation is close enough. So we got some beautiful sunlight coming in and this is a very nice resin. The Wasky Squirrel has a platinum century in this material. And also, I think, a Chinese pen in a similar material. So you may see some similarities in this design to a lot of pens, like the M100. So we'll explore those similar pens. But one of the things that's unique about this, what appears to be a drawing, but is not, this is actual embroidery. So this has been done with thread, takes many hours. We were at our local craft show. It's a juried craft show, supposedly, and this was one of the things that we picked up. It's hard to really pick up that thread material, but we'll try it with a different approach. So the camera has to be on the widest telephoto setting. Then it'll focus up to a half an inch, so hopefully you can see those threads. I'm just amazed that someone can actually do this and have it look so good. To Moon Man. They come in various types of packaging. This may be a little bit on the upscale side, but it's also simplistic packaging, functional packaging, and does the job. And we'll show my translation. The new thing I do is I take a picture of this and then have the Google Translate program send me the text. So overlay the English text on top of the uh, Chinese. For those that can read the Chinese, here's a little bit of a close-up to see if that makes sense. You know, the sleeve slides off and we see the pen. I did this in my video on mail day. So we're going to do a quick review for those that may not have seen that video. This is the Moonman S100. Here's the auction that I bought it from. And I wanted the koi finish, because I don't have a pen with this finish. And those followers of Wasky Squirrel knows that he has a Platinum Century in this finish and also a Chinese pen in this finish. And it's uh, an interesting finish. Throw a little bit of different light there. You know, it, it's doesn't have as much toyancy as, as I had hoped for or kind of expected, but it is nice. Functional clip. Screw off cap. Two turns. And we see a very uh, ornate, well, relatively ornate nib here. The classic plastic feet on the back. I think this is a fine, at least that's my recollection. But it's a number five and we can easily replace that with other number fives. Your standard converter. So let's compare this pen to other pens that you might compare it to. Here's the S100 partially disassembled. And this is my nighttime LED lights. So I thought it would be interesting to show the color under these lights. 
This has a very nice upgraded converter with a metal ring here at the bottom. I'm not a fan of that spring in there. To me it just makes this converter more difficult to clean out. And yes, it may keep ink from staying at the top of the converter, but I've only found that to be the problem in a few pens. It's a nib assembly. It's uh, branded on the nib. And it's also branded on this nib collar, nib assembly, however you want to call it. And the other thing to keep in mind is it is identical to a D-like nib assembly. I like that little O-ring at the bottom. It's a place I can put my extra O-rings that I've gotten uh, from my pen BBS. As you can see, it moves very easily. A little bit of look at this acrylic in this light. And with my trusty LED x-ray, we can look at this acrylic in the cap. It's fairly nice. If we look into the cap, we'll see a, a nice cap liner in there, which also protects the clip, you know, so that's going to seal up well and also protect any rusting from any hardware that may be in place to keep that clip in place. This is an interesting look with this light here. And with the barrel, we'll see a similar type of translucency with those, you know, kind of white, cloudy, cloud-like pieces and the red bits of color there. Sim very reminiscent of the koi fish. So I've chosen an obvious one, the M100, which is larger and uh, an interesting design in its own right. And I did a full video on that a week or so ago. And here's your S100 or S1 as the labeling on the package says. And here's a Pen BBS 349, which I equate these three because they all have a cap without a finial so the cap is one piece and the clip is inserted into that cap and then held in place usually by a screw and they all have a fairly pointed end to the bottom of the barrel you know reminiscent of the Schaefer balance which I think these are all generational copies of those the S1 is a smaller pen, but it's also less costly. The other thing that you'll notice is that the uh, M100 and the 349 have a metal section in it, so you're not going to eyedropper those, where the S1 has uh, a, a resin body a section and cap, so anything can be, uh, can be eyedropped. Well, posting reveals some more significant differences. The Pen BBS 349 is definitely the larger of the pens here. Also has a number six nib, which is substantially larger than these two number fives on the Moonman pens. The S1 is the smallest of these three, which is what we expected from when it was capped. You can see the metal band here uh, that's part of that metal piece that's in these sections. It's nice that they all have that same material in the section as they do in the barrel and cap. I think that's an excellent design feature. The sections are also different between these three pens, more than I expected. The 349 has the shortest section, so I lined these up so the end of the nibs are about the same place. So you can get an idea of if you hold these in a certain section, you'll be much closer to the end of the nib, then and yes, <clears throat> the 349 here, you're, you can ride a little bit higher because of that number six nib. It's a bigger distance between the end of the section and the end of the nib. You know, both of these sections, this is the smallest one, this is the next smallest one, and the 349 is slightly larger, but it's also shorter. So each of these three have different ergonomics from uh, a writing experience. I find all three of them comfortable for me. Um, I think the M100 is probably the most comfortable. 
I'm not a fan of a large curve here in the section because that kind of tries to restrict your fingers to a certain part on the section and I like to to move my fingers around when I write you know kind of avoid uh, one particular holding of the pen which you know for me could uh, cramp up so that's uh, one of my challenges when you're writing three four five six pages you may find that so it ink to put in it I decided to try this ink from the DC pen show pen show exclusive I got a big bottle 80 milliliters here's the color card and my first response is this is less scarlet than frankly scarlet which we can see here so a little bit disappointed at least in the color here's the chromatography seems to have some uh, water resistance there at the bottom but it's more like a dusty purple than anything else and again comparing it to frankly scarlet my other scarlet from the DC pen show it certainly is a color that I would find hard pressed to say is in the scarlet family so I say this pen is in the small pen variety small medium said it's uh, two turns to take the cap off it fits in the hand without posting it's extremely light it will give you those weights the section is about as small as I can tolerate probably a little bit on the small side of small it does post very deeply and very securely and actually adds some to me needed weight to the pen so let's see how this nib puts down ink Well, it is a very fine nib. I would say it's closer to extra fine. It looks like it puts down a decent amount of ink, but you can see from the schmear that it dried almost instantly, which I don't think this ink is known for. But it doesn't put down a lot of ink. You get a decent amount of feedback from this. And I did do a little bit of micro mesh because when I first wrote with it, it wasn't fun. So overall, this nib is not good in my view. It looks nice, but on a $20 plus pen, it's, it's not fun to write with. From what I like, if you like stiff, fine nibs, then this might work for you, but not what I like. Um, you need to put pressure on it to write with it. If you don't, then it gets even finer. I mean, that's a fine line. And because it's really stiff, you know, nail stiff, it doesn't bounce at all. I mean, it, it kind of digs into the paper if you do put pressure on it. So that's where I'm at. So if I was to rate this, well, I am going to rate it. I'm going to give it a 7.9. I mean, the pen's a little on the small side. The acrylic is not unique. The manufacturing is done very well. You know, it's a type of pen that if this is something you like, then that's great. It's certainly not something I like. So now we're going to see how well this nib assembly swaps out we're going to put in a d-like medium that i just got from bobby and see how that writes so here's that d-like medium it's exactly the same nib assembly as in the moon man so this uh, should just screw right in you can see it's an interesting cut out there so i'm hoping and expecting this nib to have a little bit of softness to it and a little bit of flex so the nib fit fine it, it screwed right in so this nib assembly, I flushed it with uh, mild soap, rinsed with water, 
put the nib assembly in and then I flushed ink in and out three times so this is really saturated and, and hopefully it's going to be writing well and needless to say I have touched nib to paper and we're going to give you my first impressions you can see it was a little bit of a hard start but it had been uncapped for a while I mean if you compare this to the original nib there's no comparison I mean if I was to rate this pen with this nib I'd bring it up to a 9.2 I mean this is smooth well I have to check that out so this nib is smooth It's wet. It can have a, some hard starts. So the nib is a little temperamental, but take it slow and you'll be rewarded. I mean, it's smooth going on that horizontal plane. It's smooth when you spread those tines. You know, you're not going to get super flex out of this, but that's a nice medium to a broad and a half. We'll call it a 1.5B. Kind of reminds me of Wasky Squirrel. Wasky Squirrel and his stipulate reminds me of that. So I need to take a look if this is ink or nib related. You can see it does start back up. My guess is, is that this nib overwhelms the feed and, and starves the feed out because of the amount of ink that it lays down. And it takes a while for it to recover, which I've had a, a, a challenge with other types of nibs like this that we're kind of retrofitted to um, an existing feed so maybe I'll take this apart open up that channel do a little work with it but overall I'm really impressed again Bobby's come through with another interesting nib this is a iteration or a PS to my Moonman S100 video I did replace the ink with this ink a Robert Oster ink and I've been writing with it for a while, so I just wanted to show you how a different ink will work in this pen and this challenging nib. So before I wrote with this, I noticed that there was a space between the tines. Even though the nib is up against that feed like it should be, the tines had a gap in it, which when you get that, It's going to make it harder for ink to work in the pen. So it did skip right there in the beginning. But now that I put the tines closer together, it requires a little bit of pressure to write. And it is sensitive to angle. But I am happier with this ink and this nib and feed assembly you gotta write slowly that's really the key to this and it you do get some flex But certainly not even a semi-flex, I would say. And I think that's the key to making this nib work. So I just wanted to give you a little bit update before we do the closing for the video. So we've done a little bit of exploring here, so thank you for following along. We reached the end of this video. So may you have many great writing experiences. It's amazing what's out there. The instruments that are available for us to put ink on paper, to put our thoughts on paper. 
So this is the end for now. Yes, I definitely need to uh, see how this nib needs to be handled. I know watch this girl doesn't like to do that either, but it does work. So this is the end for now. And maybe you get some ink, even though it has that spring in it, ink could be not flowing well in the cartridge. You'll need to check that out. So I'm going to go out and do that. So we're going to say bye for now. As long as we can get this thing to write. The ink looks much better in this nib than it did in the other nib.